All right, guys, it is 10 o'clock, so we're going to get started. Um, if you can hear me, please unmute your mic and just let me know that you can hear me and that you can see the screen that I'm sharing with you. Awesome. All right. So um, we're going to try to do this every week at 10 o'clock. We're going to record these sessions. We're going to post them on our A plus college ready science YouTube channel. Uh, if during our session you would turn off your webcam and mute your mic, it'll make the system work better. If you do have a question, by all means, please uh, unmute yourself and ask. That's what we're here for. Um, the next session will be next Friday at 10. Today's session though is gonna cover what we hope you've already covered during uh, the first week or maybe two weeks of your course. And we're gonna start by talking about motion. So what, what you're really doing right now in class might be called mechanics, which is the branch of physics that deals with the motion of bodies and the effect of forces on them. Now you're not talking about forces yet, you'll get to forces later. What you're really dealing with right now is a branch of um, mechanics called kinematics. So this is the motion of bodies without reference to the forces. In the next uh, unit or the next chapter, you'll get to dynamics where you start talking about forces. Translational motion is really what we're dealing with right now, and that's motion without rotation. We'll have a, a couple of units later where we deal with rotating objects. Right now, we're just dealing with things moving linearly. Another important thing to know in this unit are the difference between vector quantities and scalar quantities. These are typically kinds of measurements Vector quantities take into account both the size of something, its magnitude, and also the direction with which it's moving. Typically, we're going to notate the direction with a plus or minus sign. In physics, plus usually means either to the right, if something's moving horizontally, or up, um, if it's moving vertically. Negative, on the other hand, means moving to the left or down. So realize positive and negative when we're talking about vector quantities are not so much about positive and negative, they're about right or left or up or down. Some examples of common vector quantities we're gonna be talking about in physics are velocity, acceleration, displacement, and force. And there are lots of others, but those are the ones we'll get to first. Scalar quantities, on the other hand, are measurements in which uh, only magnitude matters. Direction is not included. So for example, distance is the scalar somewhat equivalent of displacement. Speed, very similar to velocity, but without, um, without a direction. Mass, time, electric charge. Those are all quantities that we measure that don't include, um, in this case, a direction. All right, so I'm gonna move on down to this slide. So one of the important things we'll talk about in the motion chapter is position. Position is notated with an X and it's the separation of an object from a fixed reference point. So your starting point. Oftentimes that reference point is going to be zero, like on an axis, a graph axis. Not always though. So you've got to know what your frame of reference is, where you're starting from, and your position is where you end up at in reference to where you started from. Position is a vector quantity. So again, plus means to the right or up when we're talking about positions and negative means to the left or down. Distance um, requires no reference point. It's a scalar. Uh, it's symbolized by Delta S and we'll see an example with distance in a minute. Um, displacement on the other hand is something's change in position. It's gonna be symbolized as Delta X. We're gonna see this delta symbol throughout this course. Delta means change in, so change in position. Displacement like position is a vector quantity. So plus and minus matter. All right, we're also gonna talk a lot about velocity in, in throughout this course. Average velocity is something's displacement 
divided by time, change in time. So change in position over change in time, or we might say displacement over time. Whenever we see this delta, I want you to think of something, the final version of that something minus the initial version of that something. So if we're looking for uh, delta x, it would be the final position minus the initial position. If we're looking for a change in velocity, it would be the final velocity of that object minus its initial velocity. So when you're thinking about delta, it's always final minus initial. And remember that um, signs count. We could end up with a negative change in velocity or a negative change in position. That's important. <clears throat> so velocity is a vector. Magnitude and direction are critical. Speed, on the other hand, is a scalar. Speed's only about magnitude. So you might say you're moving at 50 meters per second. Well, that's a speed. Now you might say you're moving at positive 50 meters per second or 50 meters per second to the right. That's, that's a velocity. So velocity includes magnitude, direction. It's a vector. Speed, only magnitude, it's a scalar. We're going to talk, focus mostly in this session today on graphs. We're going to talk about two kinds of graphs and then one other kind of diagram. Position time graphs are what we'll start with. So in a position time graph like this one, um, the slope of a line represents the velocity. Because remember that velocity is change in position over change in time. When we find the slope, remember that slope is change in y over change in x. Well, in this case, our y is position. So we're looking at change in position over our x here is time, change in time. Change in position over change in time is velocity. So we're going to see several practice problems with this in a minute. But one thing I want to also point out, let's say you were asked to find the displacement between time zero and time three seconds in this graph. So you're looking for the displacement between t equals zero and t equals three. Remember that displacement is change in position. And to find change in anything, you're going to take the final version of that quantity minus the initial version. So at three seconds, our position is 30. That's our final position. Thirty meters. Our initial position at time zero is right here, and it's zero. So thirty meters minus zero gives us a change in um, position. Thirty positive thirty meters. That is our delta x. Now, on the other hand, let's look at that same quantity for uh, time three to six seconds. So at time three seconds, the position is 30 meters. At time six seconds, the position is also 30 meters. So the change in position, the displacement, is equal to the final position minus the initial position. In this case, the final position is 30. The initial position is also 30, which means our displacement is zero. Something that I want you to pay attention to in this diagram in a position time graph, when you have a section with a positive slope, that means that you have a positive velocity. The object's either moving to the right or it's moving up, depending on your frame of reference. When you have a line with a zero slope like this, you have zero velocity. And that's telling you that the line, that the object isn't moving, it's sitting still. And then finally, when you have a line like this with a negative slope, that means the object has a negative velocity. It's moving either to the left or down, depending on your frame of reference. 
So let's let's calculate uh, both the velocity and the um, displacement from six seconds to eight seconds. So from t equals six to t equals eight. Let's calculate first the um, the displacement. So remember, delta x is final position minus initial position. So our final position at eight seconds is zero. Our initial position at six seconds is 30 meters. So delta x equals zero minus 30 meters. So our displacement is negative 30 meters. That means during this two second time interval, this object moved either two second or 30 meters to the left or 30 meters down. Let's also calculate the velocity for the object between t equals six and t equals eight. And remember to find velocity on a position time graph, you need to find the slope of the line during that time interval. So at six seconds, our y coordinate is 30. So those are our coordinates for the first point. We could pick any two points on this section of the line here, but uh, I'm just gonna do the beginning and ending points. So at six, we're at 30, at eight, we're at zero. <clears throat> That's right here. So remember we find slope by going change in Y over change in X. So I'm gonna go 30, start here, minus the other Y, zero. It's change in Y. And then I'm gonna, if I start with 30, I also have to start with six down on the bottom when I do my change in X. So six minus eight. So I end up with 30 over negative two, and that gives me negative 15. Now on top, these numbers were in meters. And on bottom, these were in seconds. So we're talking about 15, negative 15 meters per second. Sorry, I, I, yeah, go ahead. I'm on class because I'm in AP Physics 12A. Yeah, this is AP Physics. Okay, because I'm curious because it's Angela Lewis Smith Clark that's. So, so now say again, Angela Lewis Smith Clark. What, what, what are you talking about there? I'm a teacher for physics. Is this a substitute? No, no, no. So, so that that is your teacher, Angela Lewis Smith Clark. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I work with a group called A Plus College Ready, and we help teacher or we help students throughout the state. So, your teacher has just recommended you to attend this session uh, to review the materials you should be learning in the first week of AP Physics. Okay, got it. Now. You're you're in the right place. All right, what I was saying there is that the negative velocity means that this object is moving either to the left or downward. So key takeaways from position time graphs, which you guys are going to see a lot. If you want to find the displacement of an object from a position time graph, displacement, remember, is delta x. You take the final position of that object. The, uh, the position at the last time you're asked about, and you subtract from that the initial position, the position at the beginning of the time interval. Also, you can find velocity from these graphs, average velocity. And to find the average velocity, you're going to find the slope. And remember that positive and negatives matter. Positive slope is telling you that the object's moving to the right or upward. Negative slope is telling you that it's moving to the left or downward. All right, do I have any questions on the position, position time graphs we're looking at here? Will the position time graphs always have the side that says position and the bottom x coordinate that says time or will that be interchangeable uh yeah so so yes the position should always be on the y and the time should always be on the x and uh the physics the, the folks who write the ap physics questions are really good about labeling the axes so it should be obvious what you're looking at okay good thank you yes sir any other questions now so, so something we didn't see in the previous graph is a curve. 
So you guys notice how that this line is not a straight line. This line is curving and it's concave up. And what I'm hoping that you know that that means is that this, this curve has a constantly changing slope. Let's just say it has a changing slope. And remember that the slope of a position time graph is velocity. So because this slope is changing, that means the velocity is changing. And another thing that you want to pay attention to here is that the slope as we go from zero toward five seconds is getting steeper and steeper. So the slope is not only changing, the slope is increasing. As the slope increases, that means the velocity is increasing. So, so on a um, on a graph like this, a uh, position time graph with a curve, this shape curve, we might call this shape curve concave up. It's this shorter shape like that. If you have a concave up position time graph, that's telling you that your velocity is increasing. And we're going to talk about acceleration in a minute. That's telling you that you have a positive acceleration. And we'll talk more about acceleration here in a second. But if you have a concave up graph, the velocity is changing, the velocity is increasing because the slope is changing and the slope is increasing. Here we have the opposite. Here we have a graph that is concave down. And the slope is, the slope is changing here, so the slope is changing. Because the slope is changing, that means the velocity is changing. But what you're seeing is that the slope is constantly getting less and less as we go from point, this initial point here, toward point E. So as the slope decreases, that means the velocity decreases. Because again, remember, position time graph, slope tells us velocity. So in this case, the velocity is decreasing. And that's because we have an acceleration that is negative. And we'll talk again about acceleration in a second to clarify that. Questions on either, either of these two curved graphs, because you will see these from time to time. If on a position time graph you get a curve, realize that the velocity is changing. There's acceleration going on. That's the key thing to take away from curved position time graphs. And here we see other examples. Um, so all of these, go ahead, question. So here we see graphs that are concave up. Uh, and again, slope is increasing, velocity increasing. Here we see concave down graphs, um, which would tell us that you have um, negative acceleration. So these are all showing positive acceleration. These are also showing negative acceleration. One other thing that I will very briefly mention, if you have a curve like this um, and you're asked to find the instantaneous velocity from a position time graph, instantaneous velocity is different than average velocity. If you want to find the average velocity on a position time graph, you take any two points on that line and you find the slope between those two lines, between those two points rather. Instantaneous velocity though is the, the exact velocity at a certain instant in time. So let's say that we were asked here to find the exact instantaneous velocity at two seconds. And we're talking about for the red curve. So you go to two seconds on that curve and you draw in by hand a tangent line, which we see drawn in here in green. Remember, a tangent line is a line that touches the curve at only one point. <clears throat> we then would estimate the coordinates of any two points on this line, this tangent, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> 
So estimate the coordinates of any two points on that tangent line and then find the slope between those points. And you can see that's been done here at the bottom. So they're estimating an instantaneous velocity of 0.65 meters per second at that exact point of two seconds. So if you want to find an exact instantaneous velocity at a certain point in time, and you're looking at a position time graph, you have to draw in a tangent to the curve and find the, the slope of that tang tangent line. Here we see some more curves. So the black line we're looking at. Um, here they drew in a tangent line at this point. Here they drew in a tangent line at this point. Here they drew in a tangent line at this point. And because it's curved concave up, we can see that those tangent lines are getting steeper and steeper. They're, they're having higher and higher slope as we move from A to B to C. And that tells you that the velocity is increasing because there is a positive acceleration. So let's talk acceleration for a minute. Acceleration is um, the rate of change of velocity with time. We're often going to write it like this. A equals delta V over delta T. You could also think of it as A equals VF minus vi over delta t. So let's think about what the units are for acceleration. Up at the top, you're going to have velocity, change in velocity, which is measured in meters per second. Down on the bottom, you're going to have change in time, which is measured in seconds. So we could write our acceleration units like this. That's not the typical way to do it, though. Oftentimes, you think of this s on the bottom as s over 1. And you guys, I hope, know that when you simplify fraction on fraction, fraction under fraction, you invert and multiply. So we would end up with something like this. And that could simplify down to meters per second squared. Those are the typical units we're going to see for acceleration. For example, the um, acceleration due to gravity is a common constant that we think about in terms of um, AP Physics 1. And oftentimes that's said to be 10 meters per second square. What that really means is this. Think of the units in this context. Every second, the speed of the object changes by 10 meters per second. Every second, the, the, the velocity changes by 10 meters per second. That's what meters per second square means. Now, positive and negative acceleration can be a little bit tricky. Remember, sign matters. Acceleration is a vector. Um, if you have an object that has a positive velocity and it also has a positive acceleration, that means it's moving to the right and its speed is increasing to the right. So this thing is moving to the right and getting faster. Now, on the other hand, if you have a positive velocity, but a negative acceleration, A's velocity is this way, A is this way, that means you're moving to the right, but you're accelerating to the left, which means the magnitude of your velocity is decreasing. You're slowing down, essentially. What I'm trying to tell you is that when the, the sign of your velocity and your acceleration is the same, the velocity is increasing. When the sign of your velocity and acceleration are opposites, the magnitude of uh, the uh, the magnitude of the velocity is decreasing, it's slowing down. So in this case, the object would be speeding up. In this case, because the signs are opposite, this object would be slowing down. Here, they're both negative. They're both uh, the object's moving to the left. It's accelerating to the left. That means it's going to be speeding up going to the left. Here, the signs are opposite. So the object is moving to the left, but accelerating to the right. So it's going to be slowing down. We don't like to use the word deceleration in, in physics. We're going to talk about positive and negative accelerations 
and you have to compare the sign of your acceleration to the sign of your velocity to tell if the object is speeding up or slowing down. Again, if velocity and acceleration have the same sign, the same direction, the object is speeding up. If velocity and acceleration have opposite signs, opposite directions, the object is slowing down. So we're going to talk about another graph today, and that graph is going to be velocity versus time. Here's a velocity time graph. Now, there's a couple, there's really a, three main things you can find from this velocity time graph. One of them is the instantaneous velocity. Let's say that you want to know the instantaneous velocity of this object at two seconds. Well, you go over to two seconds. You go up to see where your graph cuts, and then you just read the velocity off the y-axis. So at two seconds, this object is moving at 12 meters per second. At, uh, let's say, seven seconds. We go up to seven seconds, read across. It's also moving at 12 meters per second at seven seconds. But let's say at one second, the instantaneous velocity is eight meters per second. So you can find instantaneous velocity. Yeah. by simply reading it off the y-axis. All right, another thing you can find is the acceleration. Remember that acceleration is changing, um, is changing velocity over changing time. Well, on our graph, velocity is um, on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis which means if we find the slope of a velocity time graph, that's gonna tell us our acceleration. Slope of a velocity time graph gives us an acceleration. So let's say we wanted to know the acceleration during this time interval, zero to three seconds. Get some coordinates. So at time zero, point number one, our y is four. And at time three seconds, our y is 16. So we find the slope between those two points, change in y over change in x. So let's go 16 minus four over three minus zero. So that's going to give us 12 over three, and that's going to end up as four. Now, the top units are in meters per second. The bottom ones are in seconds. So that's going to give us an acceleration in meters per second squared, or meters per second per second. And notice it's a positive acceleration. Remember, sign matters. Acceleration is a vector. Let's say we wanted to know the acceleration between three and six seconds. So this time interval. At three, our y coordinate is 16. At six, our y coordinate is also 16. So our, um, our slope is changing y, 16 minus 16, over changing x, and we get zero. Now, some people think that this means this object isn't moving. That's not what it means at all. This object is moving during that whole time interval at 16 meters per second. What the zero acceleration means is the velocity isn't changing during that time interval, it's constant. All right, let's also find the acceleration for this last time interval. Let's say we wanna know the acceleration here between six and eight. So at six seconds, our Y coordinate is 16. At eight seconds, our Y coordinate is eight. So find that slope, 16 minus eight, change in y over uh, change in x, six minus eight, because if we started with this 16, we've got to start with a six. So that gives us eight over negative two. So we end up with an acceleration of negative four meters per second square. So, so far we've talked about being able to find two things on a velocity time graph. Instantaneous velocity, you simply read off the y-axis. 
the acceleration you find the slope of the of the curve and then the other thing you can find is displacement this is an important equation we'll talk about during this course displacement is equal to um, velocity times time and that really comes from the um, equation for velocity change in uh, displacement over change in time we just rearranged for delta x so here's the deal the way we're going to find um, the displacement from this curve is we're going to calculate the area under the curve now eventually you're going to take the physics version of phys uh, the calculus based version of physics and you're going to learn that you can find the area of a curve by taking what's called an antiderivative or an integral don't worry about that for right now we're going to find the area under the curve using simple geometry and we're going to do that let's say we wanted to know the displacement between zero and three seconds so we want to find delta x um, from zero to three so what we have to look at is this section of the graph from zero to three seconds and we want to find the area uh, between the curve and um, the zero line so the easiest way to do that is to break this into a shape. We're going to break it into a triangle and a rectangle. And we're going to calculate the areas of that triangle and that rectangle. So this triangle has a height from 4 up to 16. So it has a height of 12. It has a base from 0 to 3. So it has a base of 3. And you guys, I hope, know that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height so that would be one half three times 12 so one half of 36 so that has an area of 18 and that's going to be meters per second times seconds which is meters 18 meters we also need to find the area of this little rectangle here so the rectangle is three meters long it's four meters tall so the area of a rectangle is just base times height so that's going to be three times four 12. and again um, the height is in meters per second the base is in seconds we multiply those together we get meters so we have an area of the rectangle of 12 an area of the triangle of 18 so we end up with a total area under the curve of 30 meters and the area under the curve is your displacement. Let's say we wanted to find the, um, the displacement between 6 and 8 seconds. Now some of you are going to look at that slope of the curve here and see that it's a negative slope. And you're going to think that that means it's moving backward. It's not. Remember that the slope on a velocity time graph is acceleration. Notice the, the, the velocity of this object between six and eight seconds is somewhere between 16 and eight, positive 16 and positive eight for the whole time. But if we wanna know the displacement between six and eight seconds, we're gonna take this, find the area between the curve and zero. We're gonna divide it into a triangle right here and then a rectangle or looks like a square down here. So the base of our triangle is from six to eight. So the base is two. The height is from eight up to 16. So that's eight. So we're gonna go one half, eight times two. So it's gonna be one half of 16. The area of there is eight and that's eight meters. We're gonna find out the area of this uh, rectangle or, or square. It has a, a length of two. Yeah, it looks like a square on the graph. It's not, not really a square. So it has a, a length of two. It has a height of eight, which means the area is base times height, 16. So between six and eight seconds, this object travels a displacement of 16 plus eight, positive 24 meters. So that's a velocity time graph. And I've got a couple of um, practice problems I want us to look at. So this first one is a position time graph. And it wants to know 
what is the displacement between zero and 15 seconds? Remember that on a position time graph, uh, to find position, to find displacement rather, you're gonna take your final position minus your initial position. So at time zero, our initial position is right here, zero. At time 15 seconds, we're right here. So our final position is 60. So we're gonna go 60 meters minus zero, and we're gonna end up with a uh, displacement of positive 60. So our answer here, plus 60 meters. Now if we wanna find the displacement between 15 and 30 seconds, same approach, um, delta x equals final minus initial positions. So at 15, our initial position is 60. And at 30, our final position is zero. So in this case, our change in position or our displacement is negative 60 meters. That's telling you that between 15 and 30 seconds, this thing moved backward. It moved to the left or downward 60 meters. So now if we wanted to know the displacement between zero and 30 seconds, well, I'm hoping that you see that it's zero. But you could use the same approach. Final position minus initial position. At time zero, our initial position was zero. At time 30 seconds, our position is zero. So zero minus zero, we end up with zero. Now, where it becomes a bit tricky is when we get to a question like number four, what distance was covered between zero and 30 seconds? Remember, distance is a scalar. Direction doesn't matter. So between here and here, the object goes from zero to 60. So there it covers 60 meters. From here to here, the object stays at 60. It's not moving. So there's no, no distance covered there. And then from here to here, the object goes from 60 to zero. So it covers another 60 meters. So the total distance covered would be 120 meters. So uh, with distance, it doesn't matter if you're going positive or negative. With displacement, it does. Distance traveled is 120 meters, but the total displacement compares where you started to where you finished. And in this case, those were the same. So our dis total displacement was zero. So now if we go on down and look at the bottom set of questions, what is the velocity of the object from zero to 10 seconds? So on a position time graph, to find velocity, you need to find slope. So let's, at, at zero, we're, our, our coordinates are zero, zero. And at 10 seconds, our coordinates are 10 and 60. So we're gonna find the slope of the line. So it's gonna be change in Y, 60 minus zero over change in X, 10 minus zero. So we're gonna end up with 60 over 10 or six meters per second, positive six. Is the object accelerating between a zero and 10 seconds? Well, remember the, the way you tell if there's acceleration going on in a position time graph is does the line curve? And notice this is a straight line, there's no curve. If there's no curve, there's no acceleration. So our answer is, it is not accelerating, and we know that because the line is a straight line. It doesn't curve either concave up or concave down. <coughs> Next question wants to know what's the velocity between 10 and 15 seconds. Again, velocity from position time graph is slope. So at 10 seconds, our coordinates are 10 and 60. At 15 seconds, our coordinates are 15 and 60. So I'm hoping that you see that if you find the slope there, change in Y, 60 minus 60, over change in X, 15 minus 10, we end up with zero. 
during this time interval right here, the, the object isn't moving, it's sitting still. And then finally, what is the velocity between 40 and 55 seconds? So that's in here. So again, let's find the coordinates at 40. Our Y coordinate is negative 40. At 55, our Y coordinate is zero. So let's go change in Y. Let's go negative 40 over or minus zero over change in X, 40 minus 55. So that would give us negative 40 over negative 15. And then if we do the math on that, that comes out to be positive 2.67. And that's meters per second. So even though this thing has a negative position, it's moving to the right. It's moving in the positive direction. It has a positive velocity, but a negative position during most of this time interval. So the object is moving forward, and we know that because it has a positive velocity. All right, that's it for this position time graph example. Are there any questions on the position time graph example that we just looked at? All right, well, let's look at a velocity time graph example then. So this looks like the same graph and it essentially is, but this time we're looking at velocity graphed on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. And we're first asked to find the displacement between zero and 15 seconds. Remember that when you're dealing with a velocity time graph, to find displacement, you have to find the area under the curve. So we need to find the area under the curve between zero and 15 seconds. The easiest way to do that is gonna to be to, to make this into a rectangle and a triangle and calculate the areas of those. So this triangle has a base of 10 and a height of 60. So if we do one half base times height, one half 60 times 10, the area of the triangle is 300. And that's gonna be meters because we're multiplying meters per second times seconds. The area of our rectangle, that rectangle has a width of five and a height of 60. So base times height, that's also gonna give us 300 meters. So the total area under the curve between zero and 15 meters is 600, or zero and 15 seconds rather, is 600 meters, positive 600 meters. So that's the answer to part one. For part two, we want to know the displacement between 15 and 30 seconds. So we're going to take this 15 seconds to 30 seconds and essentially just make that out into a triangle. Now, some of you are going to think, well, this thing's moving backward because of that slope. But remember, in a velocity time graph, slope is acceleration. The velocity during this time interval, 15 to 30 seconds, never becomes negative. It never gets below zero. So it's still moving forward. It's just slowing down as it's moving forward. We calculate the area of this triangle from 15 to 30 is our base, so that's 15, and our height is 60. So let's go one half, uh, 60 times 15, and that would be one half of 900, so that's gonna be 450 meters. And again, it's positive 450 meters. Is the object moving forward or backward? It's moving forward because it has a positive direction, positive velocity rather, during that whole time interval. All right, and then finally, what is the displacement between zero and 30 seconds? Well, we calculated the dis displacement between zero and 15. We also calculated it between 15 and 30. So all we need to do is add those together. 600 meters from zero to 15, 450, from 15 to 30, so we end up with 1,050 meters as a total displacement between zero and 30 seconds. All right, the bottom section here, if we wanna find the average velocity between 10 and 15 seconds, or I'm sorry, between zero and 10 seconds. 
<clears throat> so on a velocity time graph, if you want to find average velocity, just take um, your final velocity plus your initial velocity and average them, divide by two. So with, at, at time 10 seconds, our velocity is 60. That's our final velocity. And at time zero, our velocity was zero. So 60 plus zero um, divided by two, we have a average velocity of 30 meters per second. Next, we're asked to find the instantaneous velocity at 20 seconds. If remember, if you want to find the instantaneous velocity from a velocity time curve, you go to the time interval that you're looking for, in this case, 20 seconds. So let's go over to 20 seconds. Let's go up to our curve and then let's read the instantaneous velocity off the y axis. So our instantaneous velocity at 20 seconds is 40 meters per second. Simply read it off the graph. And that's positive 40. Six, is the object accelerating between zero and 10 seconds? So we want to know, are we accelerating in here? Remember that in a velocity time graph, slope is acceleration. This line has a non-zero slope, which means it has a non-zero acceleration. So the answer is yes, it's accelerating. We know because the line has a non-zero slope. And finally, we're asked to find the numerical value of that acceleration. Well, we need to find that by finding the slope of the line between zero and 10 seconds. So at zero, our coordinates are zero, zero. And at 10, we're looking at 60. So we find the slope 60 minus zero over 10 minus zero. We end up with six meters per second square, positive as the slope um, for that line. All right, on number seven, we're asked to find the velocity between 10 and 15 seconds. Well, the velocity at 10 is 60. The velocity at 15 is still 60. This object is moving at a constant speed of 60 meters per second during that whole time interval. Its acceleration is zero, but its velocity is 60. So don't fall for the trap and put zero there. That thing is moving at 60 meters per second between 10 and 15 seconds. Its acceleration, on the other hand, the second part of the question is zero. And we know that because the slope of this line is zero. Slope equals zero which means acceleration equals zero. All right, last question on this slide. What is the acceleration between 40 and 55? All right, acceleration, we need to find by finding slope. So at 40, our coordinate is negative 40, our y coordinate. And at 55, our y coordinate is zero. So to find the slope, negative 40 minus zero over 40 minus 55, that gives you negative 40 over negative 15, which gives you positive 2.67 meters per second square. So that means even though this object is moving in the negative direction, it's moving to the left or down during this time interval, it's actually accelerating to the right or up, which means it's slowing down. So the rest of the question here, is the object moving forward or backward? It's moving backward because it has a negative velocity during that entire time interval. All right, that's it for our velocity time graph. Are there questions I can answer about that? All right, I have one other thing I wanna show you today, and that's what's called a motion or a particle diagram. So these are a series of images of a moving object that record that object's position after equal time intervals. So for example, here are several examples. 
So let's just let's just imagine that each one of these dots shows where the thing's at after one second. So during this one second, this object moves from a position of zero to a position of two. After another second, it moves from two to four. After another second, it moves from four to six. After another, from six to eight. And after another, eight to 10. So what I'm hoping that you're seeing, it's moving forward. It's moving the same amount of distance during each time interval. So this thing has a positive velocity and that velocity is constant because it's moving the same displacement during each time interval. Excuse so me. Positive, constant velocity. Did I, did I hear a question? No, I, I need to leave the meeting because my computer's glitching up. Okay, no problem. Thanks for being here. Okay, thanks. We're just about finished anyway. All right, let's look at B. So during B, the object is still moving forward, but notice it's not moving forward as fast. In each time interval, it only moves one meter in this case. Still moving forward, still positive velocity, still constant velocity because it goes the same distance, one unit during each time interval, but the velocity in B is slower than the velocity of A. All right now let's look at C. So in C, notice the first two dots are really close together. This object doesn't move much at all during the first time interval. During the second time interval, it moves further. Third time interval, further. Fourth time interval, further. Fifth time interval, further. So this thing has a positive velocity, but it's not constant. It's accelerating and it's getting faster, so which means it has a positive acceleration. Remember, it only gets faster if the velocity and the acceleration have the same sign. So it's getting faster, and we know it's getting faster because it's moving in the positive direction. Therefore, it has to be accelerating in the positive direction. Now let's look at D. Notice between the first point and the second point, it moves three meters. Between the second and third point, it moves three meters. Between the third and fourth point, it moves three meters. That tells you that, again, that it has a positive velocity. That velocity is constant. It's going the same distance during each time interval. But D is going faster than A and faster than B because it's covering more distance during each time interval. <clears throat> All right, let's look at E. So during the first time interval, this thing goes pretty far. It goes four meters. During the sec second time interval, it doesn't go as far. During the third one, it goes even less distance. Fourth one, even less. Fifth one, even less. So this thing is moving to the right. So it has a positive velocity, but it's slowing down, which means it has a negative acceleration. And we know that because it's going less distance during each time interval. Moving to the right, but slowing down. When things are slowing down, their velocity and acceleration have opposite signs. Same kind of thing going on in F. During the first time interval, this thing goes pretty far. Second time interval, not as far. Third time interval, not as far. So this thing is moving to the right, but because it's slowing down, it has a negative acceleration and acceleration to the left. All right, those are motion particle diagrams. Can I answer questions for anybody on those? All right, that's it for this first, uh, first week's session. We're gonna try to do this every week, at least until some of this virtual schooling is over. So our session next week will be next Friday at 10 a.m. Hope to see you there.